Well, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim. <laughs> you like that clarity? I'm not getting cheap on you. I got the microphone in. I noticed a couple of times uh, putting the mic up there on the windshield and the IOTI, the uh, wind noise, the air conditioning noise, something is creating a little bit of a background noise. None of you have complained about it, but I heard it. And we're here to please, we're here to give you the best. So I mic'd up and you should have excellent audio. Uh, there's nothing to look at by looking at me and there's not much to look at looking ahead. Uh, but while I enjoy my coffee and I show you I-20 eastbound, 350 miles, we won't drive that far, but that's how far I've got to go before I <clears throat> turn south and work my way down to the 10. I have to tell you, I made two little short videos this morning and I really do feel good uh, because I woke up, I mean, there's something about when it's just the right temperature outside and you have the, you know, the windows open, you can sleep with the windows open and they get that night air, but it wasn't wet or humid or humidity or <clears throat> anything like that. It's amazing that the truck stop, when I first laid down, uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, there's all this ruckus of cars shifting gears and, you know, some guy peeling out in his hot rod and uh, the truckers are coming in. You hear the diesel engines, the other cars coming in, uh, the murmuring of um, a few voices every now and then, people going into that hotel where I stayed, pulling their luggage bags, a small chatting, uh, nothing loud, nothing annoying, nothing, you know, rowdy, just the noises of the area. And <laughs> I didn't need any sleep aid or anything last night. I just, you know, looked at my phone and went off to sleep. And of course I wake up in the middle of the night um, once, maybe twice. And I notice, especially when I get up early in the morning at four, uh, because you know, that's what time, I normally get up around five, uh, 5.30 maybe at the latest because I'm on that Eastern time. But um, you know, it's four here because I'm back an hour, but I lose an hour today. So you can hear what I was trying to say is all that noise about 11 o'clock or midnight, probably the latest, I wouldn't know I'm asleep. It's gone, all of it, gone. I wake up at four in the morning, I was the only guy out there getting some fuel and I run into Rob, who's a truck driver for Pilot. I'm, well, screwed that up for Love's. I don't know why I said that. For Love's uh, travel stop, he's got that beautiful Love semi that I was parked next to last night. All shined up. They keep him so nice. And I'm the only guy there, and there's no, no noise. I-20's calm. The traffic around that exit there is calm. It's just amazing. It goes from hustle and bustle. And, you know, it was extra busy last night because people are uh, going towards Dallas for the big eclipse. And also, I was wore out yesterday in that Dallas traffic. That is not fun. That is not travel. I do not wish that on anybody. Those poor folks that's got to go to them prison jobs Monday morning, it's got to get out there and fight that. Hopefully, most of them only have to go, you know, a couple of miles on that freeway and they get off. Hopefully, most of them work, you know, live close to their job and they don't have to go from one end of that thing to the other like I did to get out of it. I mean, that was crazy. But after a good night's sleep and being recognized this morning and you go into uh, Love's and I guess those guys have been there all night. Uh, the nice lady I met that's been there 12 years the nice gentlemen, they greet you when you come in. Hey, good morning, how you doing? They always say hello to you. And everybody was awoke, you know, awoke. everybody was awake and they were in a good mood. I'm not quite awake yet, I'm trying to get there. Let me have another sip of this delicious coffee. Oh yes. But anyway, everybody's you know in a good mood, they're awake and rushing and charging it and fixing up everything and 
putting uh, putting out all the foods that people are going to need, and making sure the coffee's right, the washer fluid jugs were all full and clean. This is no ghetto gas station. This is top shelf. They got signs that say thank you when you leave. I mean, they are, you know, like Bucky's. They're really good, but Bucky's doesn't cater to truckers. That's uh, that's these truck centers, and uh, they do a great job at hosting these guys with big restrooms and diesel fuel and all the stuff they need too. So kudos to Loves. But I feel good this morning, I'm trying to say, because I don't have to drive that traffic. I've got the freeway here all to myself, and I had a good night's rest. I got a good hot cup of coffee in my hand, and I enjoy driving. And so now I have 1,262 miles under my belt from Laughlin, and I'm excited about getting back to Florida in a degree. I've got things I've got to do, and uh, you know everything. It's it's always the journey. It doesn't matter if I'm going back home to Florida. It's always the journey. It's never the destination. And just being behind the wheel and looking at my rig this morning, you know, I got a nice truck and the nice little teardrop back there that provided the best motel hotel. There isn't a bed in that hotel that could have slept any more comfortable than I did last night. And that little teardrop that I was thinking about buying in Laughlin, in Bullhead City actually is where it was parked. <clears throat> you guys saw, I didn't know how I was gonna lay down in that. And they were like those big vinyl, sort of stiff cushions. If I didn't put a memory foam on there, they wouldn't have been that soft. And then I couldn't really make it a, a booth anymore because, <coughs> excuse me, where would I put all those bed clothes? There was no storage in that thing. So it would have to stay into a bed. Well, now I'm back to what I've got now, just something with a bed. And sure, you can stand up in it in the very front of it, you know, and stand in front of that kitchen or go in that tiny, teeny little shower that would use the water up in a heartbeat and uh, a nine gallon black tank toilet and then, uh, you know, I don't want to cook bacon inside of it. So I'm not trying to disparage it. It was a very nice camper. And I'm sure if that's what I owned, I would love it too. But in comparison that I already have this, I would either need to go like the wolf pup size or actually I saw a small, uh, I should have videoed it. I went right by it. <clears throat> they were selling like what I have right back here all kinds of like these little off-road looking jobs. All right, I gotta merge over. All right, he's gonna wait. He's slowing down. All right, I won. So, uh, but I, I, they were closed and I just kept on going, but he had a half a dozen or more of these teeny tiny bed only uh, trailers. And it would have been interesting to know how much they cost and what more they had. They looked like they had a flat roof on them instead of a, a teardrop that um, you know had a roof rack and things you could reach up there. But that meant on the inside, you had a low ceiling, like really touching your nose when you lay down, a real coffin. Mine, on the other hand, I have to get up and sit up to open my little uh, roof vent. And so, because it is a teardrop. So it has a little bit of a you know, a high roof, a high ceiling in there. You can't, you know, stand up, but it is made to sit up like on a couch uh, setting, but I have it just made into a bed. So that's the way I roll. But anyway, um, I just love this setup. I look forward to driving today. I know it's gonna be an easy drive. I thank God yesterday for all the safety each day, all these days that I've, you know, been blessed to have without truck, you know, car trouble, trailer trouble, tires. I will go over everything in Florida, uh, tire rotations. I'll check the grease and the bearings of the trailer at Teddy's. There's a grease gun there and all that. I'll make sure the tires look good. I'll inspect everything. I'll get the oil changed. I'm at 50,000 miles. I don't know if the transmission 
fluid needs to be changed in the tundra yet. It may, if it does, I'll do it. Uh, because this is, this is my life. This is, I've got to do it. I, pro I procrastinated on doing the, uh, the rear, uh, what do they call it? The rear, uh, the rear end fluid on the Forerunner, uh, the tr drive axle. No, the what's it called? The the gearing in the um, whatever. I didn't change that fluid. It was a four wheel drive. It was uh, recommended, but I didn't keep it long enough. Um, I can't think of what it's called, but it's that rear end and the front end, the front drive axle, whatever. But I'm going to take good care of this truck. Get all those fluids changed. I got a new air filter when I got the oil change before I took my trip. I'll check it uh, because it's got 5,000 miles. <clears throat> Let's see here, my gas mileage. Let's go back here. I keep, every time I start it now, I have this warning indicating I need maintenance, which is an oil change. Uh, there's a little triangle there on my dash. 13.7 miles per gallon I'm getting and I'm doing 66 miles an hour. Yesterday, all day long, I don't know why I did it, I drove faster than I needed to. The speed limit is 75 miles an hour everywhere. I don't know if that's what it is right here, but everywhere, well, I am in Texas, so uh, it's 75. And so people are doing 80, 85. I was doing 70 and 75 myself even in that wind. See, that's what gave me the bad gas mileage. I had a headwind doing 70, 75, pulling that little trailer. And what do you expect? So I drank some gas yesterday. And I don't know what the hurry is or where the fire is, but it's just like the old story. You know, you take a horseback ride, and as soon as you turn that horse's head back towards the stable, hang on. <laughs> he knows, she knows. <clears throat> it's right back fast as they can get there get that saddle off their back excuse me while I take another sip of this delicious coffee let me tell you about another trick about driving all these people blazing past me if you're in a situation like last night when I was driving to Love's um I got off at a rest stop first because I was talking to my friend in the Philippines on Facebook uh, audio. You know, you can call anywhere in the world on that. So I didn't know if I passed my exit. So I said, well, I might have to sleep here. And after I got off the phone, I found out it was the next exit. But all these people were leaving Dallas. I mean, it was, <clears throat> you probably saw the video. A lot of red lights in front of me, red lights, uh, tail lights. Again, folks, I'm not awake yet. I'm not awake yet. I'm just getting my thoughts together. And people are racing up on each other, and then they're hitting their their brakes because the, someone, you know, is over in the left lane. They want them to be in the right lane. They're zigzagging and all this stuff. All I did was set my speed lower than everybody else that was out there. This, this lane is terrible. I just set my speed at 65. Uh, you know, just go 10 miles an hour under what the traffic is, and you can sit right here, and this is what you'll get, right there. <laughs> they'll just go around you, they'll just keep going, and you'll never have to change lanes, you'll never have to brake, and guess what? When you get to Love's Travel Center, up there, there they'll be right there next to you. They didn't get there any quicker. So you say, well, you say that, so why did you drive 75 miles an hour yesterday? Because I'm dumb. Oh, let me get one more sip. That was good. Mmm, yummy. So that's really the secret. And when you're, you know, commuting to your prison job or whatever, you just leave a little bit earlier, but you're not going to get there any quicker if you ride up on people's tailgate and then everybody sees like, oh, look, the traffic's moving. Everybody gasses it and then it's hit the brakes. 
That's what my daughter goes through all the time when she leaves to her job. They go down the 400 in uh, Atlanta and it's just solid two lanes of traffic. And for some reason, after they get past an exit, uh, it picks up, there's a gap and everybody's like, oh, traffic's over. Traffic's not over. It's gonna stop again in about a thousand feet. <laughs> so just set your speed below everybody else and sit back and laugh. Right now I'm cruising along here, comfortable 66, 67 miles an hour. Nobody's behind me. It's early in the morning. I love it. I can see good. Oh, yesterday that was a little alarming. I, uh, it, during the day too, <clears throat> I think my eyes after driving 600 miles, probably anybody's eyes, were strained. And I, I wasn't seeing very good. Things were blurry, double vision. And I cleaned that windshield. Look at how clean it is for you guys with that squeegee this morning with that brand new um, washer fluid bucket, all clean. I squeegeed the windshield real carefully and good. I got bugs in the front of my mirrors and the grill. I got to really clean this truck up. That's going to be a job. I got all that to do. I'll get this thing so shiny the bugs will just bounce off when I take my next journey. And journey is it. I'm just a journeyman. Journeyman Tim. <laughs> Traveling is awesome, guys and gals. Get out here, see America. It'd take you a day or two maybe to get off the, out of the tree line or the big cities, wherever you're at, and until you get to the beautiful spot you're trying to go and see. And I have been out west all my life. That's where I always go. I hope, I hope that I will accept the suggestions and force myself to follow the front end to the northeast as the summer comes in and, and stay in the northern uh, part of the country where I can find some cool air, especially at nights, and see areas that I've never seen before. <clears throat> I hope that I run across the paths of a lot of subscribers. I hope I meet uh, uh, Isaac again. He wants to go to Maine, he said. We might run across each other up there. But I got a bucket list, folks. Now I'm going to tell you something that's a little, I don't know, kind of disconcerting. Uh, yesterday, I did some ab work at the Planet Fitness. And I hate abs. We all hate abs. Hold on while I take another swallow. Oh. That's the best cup of coffee I ever drank in my life. So I'm driving yesterday and I feel something over in my lower ab on the left side, like right above or right around my belt line. And it's sort of like, uh, not a cramp, not pain. It was like a heartbeat, it was like pulsating. It's probably a spastic muscle and I was leaning that way, you know, over towards the window or something and straining it. And I, uh, I might have pulled a little something when I did the ab machine. They got all kinds of ab machines. I won't try to describe it, but it was this one. So I'm hoping that's all it was. And then my eyesight, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> was really not good. It's sharp right now. I mean, I, I feel good. The windshield's clear. I feel confident. And I started thinking to myself, Tim, what if, because nobody's promised tomorrow, what if, and nobody knows, you know, when you, when you check out and you go to heaven, uh, you didn't know when you got cancer or you got hit by a bus or <laughs> however you left this world, you didn't know it was going to be that year, that month unless you got diagnosed with something and you know that you knew it was uh, not going to be long they were telling you that it's inoperable or you know it's not good but when when you suddenly leave or 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 you 
prepare to leave this world, you think, man, if I had more time, I wouldn't have worked as long. I would have traveled more. I would have been nicer. I would have said something to my family. I would have this. I would have that. But now, you know, the end is near. And I was just thinking weird yesterday. I was thinking, oh, Tim, what if your eyesight is really getting bad and you're not going to be able to travel? This is, this is the last trip for you. What if the good Lord said, I'm going to give you one last trip? You know, and, and now your eyes are going to all of a sudden uh, accelerate to where you, maybe not completely blind, but you couldn't drive. Or what is this gizzard thing you feel buzzing and pulsating in your side? You got something? What's going on? You need to go down and have your disadvantage plan check you out. So I just, and then I started thinking about being alone. And all right, what if the gizzard's okay, but my eyes are bad. And now I'm sitting in Jacksonville. I got nobody. I live in a camper. I'm already like, oh, like getting down in the mouth. This is what the devil was doing to me. I got nobody that cares about me. I haven't met anybody again now since I've been out of a relationship. What's going to happen to me? How am I going to, you know, do my shopping and live my life? And who would want, <laughs> who would want somebody that has these issues? And I know I'm fine. You know, I see great right now. I'm sure it was just from the gym on my abdomen thing. But one day, I mean, I'm 65. One day, and don't blink, it'll be here tomorrow. I will be much older. I won't be able to drive or want to drive. I, I will have, you know, some issues. Maybe health or whatever. It's a lot closer... You know, when you look at life as a as a as a as a ruler, as a yardstick, and you wonder how up how far across the yardstick are you to the end of it at this point in your life. You know, without something suddenly happen to you, once you get to be, you know, sixty-five, <clears throat> going on sixty-six, with the average lifespan in the seventies, you know. What are you going to do? Are you going to make the most of it? Or are you just going to let another six months or a year or even two pass you by and you move up the yardstick for nothing? So not me. Not me. I'm doing all I can do. See how I'm hanging back in my speed and that trucker's going right on by? Keep on going, fella. Or... Gal, I see a lot of women truck drivers too. Anyway, I didn't mean that to be a downer, but I hope it's a motivator that uh, you will just realize. I never thought like this when I was younger. I didn't think like this <clears throat> when I was in my 50s. It's not until you start getting your Social Security, it's not until you get your Medicare, it's not until maybe <laughs> you are. Um, you get your get your first stroke in your 40s or 50s and you start thinking about life and how long it can be hang on let me take another swallow mm. so folks i'm just trying to make you think what is what is any of this other stuff worth in the bible there's a there's a chat there's a book in the old testament I forget which book it is. It talks about, it just goes on and on and on forever saying, you know, all futile for nothing. What is it for? Nothing. What do you get out of it? Nothing. In comparison to breathing in and out, <laughs> you know, life. You really do have to weigh what is it worth or do you want to be around? I used to ask the stupid question like, would you like to be, you know, a millionaire for uh, 10 years and die? Or would you rather be 
a broke dick and live for 25 more years. You know? I think most people would choose the latter. Anybody that says the first one, I don't think, I think they're not being honest because everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go tonight. So just think about your life, folks. Look in the mirror today and say, what am I doing? Am I wasting another day today? Am I listening to things that are just demoralizing me? Do I really need to concern myself with what they're talking about? Is there anything I can really do? Or are they just trying to, you know, stress me out so that I'll die and they won't have to give me my, ch- my uh, child, my social security? And believe me, I hope once you stop working and you're not paying taxes anymore, you're not throwing in the kitty fund to these politicians, believe me, you're worthless to them. You, you, are, you are absolutely expendable. What good are you? They certainly don't want to give you anything. Heck no. And don't lie to yourself and say they do. If they cared about anything, they'd pave this road. <laughs> so it's only you. You are the one that has to decide in your mind. You can't rely on Dave Ramsey or Fox News or CNN or your good friend or anybody that tells you this is the secret. This is the way you need to pursue. Work, work, work. Save, save, save. Go, go, go. Spin, spin, spin. Well, some of those things you do, but I'm trying to... Don't take it out of context. I'm just saying, you need to reflect on your own life. What is it you really want? Do you just want to work and don't care and drop dead at the job? Uh, Do you not care uh, if you just work, 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 and you get a a little bigger Social Security check, and you sit at home in your chair drinking Geritol and uh, and then die? Do you not care if you don't ever go golfing or fish or uh, see the Smoky Mountains or out west? Well, that's your life. You do you. Absolutely. If that makes you happy, well... That's it. But for me, I've I've decided. I've had a ball and chain removed from my ankle. I had a situation where two minds didn't think alike. No two minds think 100% alike. But to make a, a collaboration in life, and say, you know, make a commitment, say marriage. <laughs> Don't you think you gotta be somewhat like-minded, have the same ideals, and you know, wanna go in the same direction, have the same goals? Of course you do. So, everybody needs to choose their own path. What's good for you may not be good for them, or vice versa, so, <clears throat> you know, figure it out, figure it out sooner than later. Don't. Don't do what I've done and many others, millions, of waste time with someone, with some dead-end job, with some dead-end place you're living, with some high-cost rent, some high-cost mortgage you got into yourself into, with some high-payment truck because you got this big lifted diesel truck, or you got this Lexus or you got this BMW or Mercedes hood ornament. Who are you impressing? Are you living your life for them? Or are you going to live your life for yourself? Find out what real happiness is, is when you do something for you. We're all, we're all guilty. I've been guilty of doing something for others, you know, uh, impressing others with, you know, keeping up with the Joneses or whatever. But now, just like that that book in the Bible I was just talking about, that was all for nothing. It's, it's all a waste of time. So, I'm going to find out what book that is. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. I know i got some scholars out there. 
It just goes on and on and on. Uh, all futile, I think it says, or something like that. All these things. Because the most important thing is, this is not crushing it for Christ video, but the most important thing is living your life for God and counting on His direction and blessings. And He can show you what it is if you'll wake up and stop trying to do things your own way. Stop leaning on your own understanding. He says His, his yoke is, is light, His burden is easy. So, you got to get away from these trucks. Now I've got to pass. They're going too slow. So I'll get on in front of these guys and I'll slow it back down. That's how you do it. He's just crawling, this guy. He must be ahead of schedule. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to finish my coffee. I just took another swallow. And I want to tell you guys, I read the comments last night. And it was a slow video day, you know, driving and about as nervous as a whore in church and in driving around Atlanta. But today I'll try to break early because tomorrow I'll definitely arrive. I'll try to break early and get myself set up, break out the, uh, the mini barbecue grill and cook up that cowboy steak. I know uh, I read the comments last night. A lot of you love the cooking videos. I'll cook it up over there, Ted and Jolene's. I won't burden her. Uh, on breakfast and different things, I'll uh, I'll open up the galley and, and cook it up, fire up my grill. I'll have to be busy most days helping them out. Whatever it is they want to get done there, I don't want to dibble dabble around like, all right, we'll work a little bit here. Let's get it done because I got to go. And whatever you need me to do, you better you better get all you can out of me while I'm there because once I see these doctors and I'm done, I'm going to get there early, you know, to help them out ahead of my doctor appointments. And then, uh, you know, I can stick around a little bit afterwards, depending on what they need to get done. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I got to do to help them out, but I want to get it done. And I know Miss Jolene is a get her done gal. She don't play. Teddy, he likes to dabble in about 12 different projects at once. <laughs> He's always done that, always. He'll start something, then start something else. And then he'll go out and lay in the sun and sit on the dock. Now that guy knows how to relax. Hey, he's not in a hurry about anything. He's 78 years young. And he, he's built himself a nice little life. Place there in Boynton Beach, Florida on the intercoastal and a nice place in uh, in the Adirond Adirondacks, I guess that's how you say it, up on some big lake in New York, way upstate. And he goes back and forth like a snowbird. When I first met him, he didn't go back up there that much, uh, but he's been doing it religiously now for a long time. and. Talking about having somebody to help you in life, you know, think how lucky he is to have a woman like Jolene. I mean, if I were to have to write a <laughs> write a wish list, it'd be somebody like her because not because she just does everything or whatever, it's because she just does everything. <laughs> she is something. She can cook it up. She can. She wants to work. She keeps that property perfect. She does uh, different things. They got things that they sell. You know, on Facebook, she's techie. Uh, she thinks of everybody. She puts everybody before herself. She's really got a good heart. That's a good woman right there really is. She's got some good children. I met her son. 
and her daughter-in-law and her other daughter. Uh, they're all nice, very friendly. They love coming there too and visiting. She got grandchildren, you know. And Teddy's just, he's just a lucky guy. He's a lucky guy. And a lot of you out there, like Fred, my good Fred, my good friend Fred over in Sarasota, him and Raffaella. He got him a good one too. Woo! A really good one. She keeps that house spick and span. She's an Italian. She keeps him straight. And uh, she can cook it up. Oh man. Uh, this is a real real challenge right there. That woman can she's got the old school recipes. I mean desserts. Any kind of she I'm going over there. They're expecting me when I come back. That's, that's what I gotta do. I gotta get over there and, and see them. I might, I might should go there first. <laughs> Talk, talking about that Italian food. I love her cooking, man. She can cook all these different Italian dishes she's made for me. She knows my favorite. And she said, that's it, that's so simple. I like that spaghetti with olive oil and minced garlic. It's a simple, traditional, it's called Ali Ayo or something like that. If you're Italian out there, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's just minced garlic that literally is uh, tanned and uh, cooked in olive oil. And you stir it around and then you pour that over uh, pasta. And I'm talking about it, it is on your plate, it, your pasta is soaking in it. Olive oil with garlic, not just you know, sprinkled over and it's tossed in it. I'm talking about it's floating in it. Yeah, that is good. But she makes the really good uh, meat sauce, regular sauce. And Fred, Fred's the reason I've got the teardrop. I told you guys the story, Fred, Fred will not lie to you. Fred will tell you, you know, he doesn't, you know, want you to save money or not save money. Well, he wants you to save money, but he says, Tim, I'm not telling you what to do, but you might think about twice about pulling that big camper around the country and up mountains. Because he was a truck driver, see, when he was young. He'd been all over the country. And he says, you know, that 6,500 pound trailer is gonna seem a lot heavier in those mountains. And I went through some hills. It would have been, you know, 14.2 uh, miles per gallon, folks. Oh, I got to slow it down. I'm doing 72. Let's back it down a little bit. Uh, but anyway, he said, you might want to think about getting something smaller. He didn't know what. And so I mentioned that in a video. And then Donald, a subscriber, God bless him. He says, oh, I heard you say you might want something smaller. I looked on the internet on Facebook Marketplace. You're in Boynton Beach right now. Check this out. He sent me two ads on two teardrops both by Braxton Creek, Bushwhacker. And I got the small one. The other one was, you know, a few grand more. I didn't want to spend it. And I didn't even think I was going to buy this. I thought, what? And look how fortuitous, look how God worked through people and put me on the right thing, knowing my trip, knowing where I was going to go, knowing everything before I left, knowing it all, Knows what I'm going to do next. Knows what I'm going to do today. He knows what you're going to do too. And the sooner you realize this, the more exciting it'll be to trust for what will um, come about. So anyway, on that there, I'm really excited now. I'm going to end this video. And well, I don't know what time it is, but that sun should be coming up soon. I've already got some miles on the... Uh, clicker here. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get ahead of and go through these towns before. Hey, it's Saturday, right? All right. No work days. 20 east to Shreveport and Longview. That's the uh, direction I'm heading. So listen, everybody, I really appreciate the views, your comments, your suggestions. Uh, John, my co-pilot, and those that I've mentioned uh, that have helped me out sent me other links, all the invitations I get every day. I got another one last night 
from someone that was in Texarkana that had room for me for the camper, uh, but I'd already gone through there. I didn't see the email until I got where I was because I was driving white knuckled trying to get through Dallas, so I couldn't look at the phone. Thank you so much for your invitations and your kind comments that you guys give. Uh, thank you so much for the coffee donations. Thank you so much for using my Amazon link. And thank you uh, for those that uh, say hello to me when you see me. Uh, thanks to Rob this morning uh, for delivering that gas and keeping the gas stations full and keeping his truck so shiny and walking out of his way to come over there and shake my hand. He was a, such a nice guy. And uh, yeah, I can tell. I can tell. I, I know people. I can tell, you know, in a second. And um, the people at Love's that are doing a good job and all my uh, friends and family that are watching, I just, I really appreciate everybody. I know that uh, maybe I said some things earlier about, oh, I might die. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about that this morning. I see good. My tummy doesn't hurt. I feel good. And I'm going to keep going to the gym, keeping in health, seeing my doctor, going to see the dermatologist, the eye doctor, going to build some decks. We're going to definitely crush it. <laughs>